Hello, I'm Cheryl and welcome to today's class, which is Color on the Bond. There is absolutely no introduction that you need except that it's plum luscious, it's wonderful, it's easy to do on the bond, and let's go right to the sampler we're going to work on today. We're going to work from the bottom up, we're going to do some horizontal stripes, etc., etc., and we're going to start right with those horizontal stripes. Even before I turned on the tape, I didn't want to waste a single foot, so I already cast on 48 stitches and knit four rows, which I would like you to do be after you stop this tape. But you already know how to do stripes. It's the same thing as adding sweater yarn to the waist yarn that you already have. You simply take the main yarn out of the carriage, insert your second color yarn into the eye of the carriage, knit across, oops, get some slack here, and you have a one row stripe. However, what you don't know, perhaps, is how to weave in this end. Now I've left this one particularly long, but it doesn't hurt to have it that long. Because lazy knitters don't like a whole bunch of yarn ends hanging at the end, I want to show you right now how on the very next row, after you've knit the color in, you can go back and weave this in. You start here. Now this is making a loose stitch for two reasons. This is slack. Notice that whenever you leave a yarn in the fabric guide, you have to have lots of slack. We're going to go over. You can go over that end stitch or the next one. Then under, over, under, I generally like to end with an under. You'd only have to go over about six stitches or so, and you may hang a clip on this end to hold it. Once the needles are in that position, you need to push them back into half knit position. Make sure those latches are open or else you will drop stitches. And knit back. Those needles go automatically back into working position. I'm going to hang my claw weights here. I can remove this clip. When I was making one sweater, I was going to be very clever, and I cut off all these yarn ends that I had woven in, and I cut them too short. And what ended up happening is when I took the knitting off the frame and it shrunk back in, all those little yarn ends popped out. So let yourself have a generous piece. It doesn't have to be that long, but at least an inch until your knitting has rested, and then trim those ends to about three-eighths of an inch to a quarter of an inch, at least a quarter of an inch, because you don't want those ends to pop to the right side. Now, even though you, though you know how to do stripes already, there are a couple of little tricks in making them easy. If you work with even numbers of rows, then your yarn always ends up in the proper place. If I take the purple out now and thread up my beige, again, I'm leaving lots of slack. I hope. Okay, and I'm knitting across. If I only knit one row of this beige and don't return back here, then I have to take the key plate out of my uh, carriage, run it back, pick up this yarn again. Remember that you can keep as many yarns as you want in the carriage as long as there's a lot of slack on them. Now, what if you want to do more than two rows at a time? Let's say you want to do six rows. If you did six rows, you'd get to about the third row, and you would see that this yarn end is going to be rather long. If you went a full six rows, look at that piece of yarn would be about that long. So instead, you want to catch it in the end stitch so that it will work it, be woven in and you won't have those long floats along the edge. It does not matter if you bring this float over in this direction or if you bring it in this direction. I think for this particular place, I'm going to hang it over in this direction because I've got a little bit of tightness here. Again, hang a clip on it. Oh, my latch has closed, that stitch would very inconveniently drop off if I weren't to make sure the latch was open. I knit back across and continue with two more rows. Another thing to be said about even numbers of rows is because of the gauge of knitting, to knit two rows, it's not quite equal to one stitch, but the sweater that I'm wearing even 
shows to advantage how using two rows. I, in fact, you can see the long distance between these horizontal rows, and so I had to weave that black end all the way up. Let's go back to our sampler and notice that we have, here's a series of four rows, a series of two, then one, I think it's four, one, two, four. This is the repeat right here. Kind of interestingly done. It's just to encourage you, you don't always have to just do two rows and two rows and two rows. Okay, I would like you to stop the tape and do a small series of stripes. You can work in six rows of one color. Make sure you weave in that first yarn end. At least go the distance where you have to weave in an end float. And join me when we will do vertical and hor no, vertical and diagonal stripes. Now it's time for us to work on single stitch wide vertical and diagonal stripes. We go over to our sampler where we see a couple of them together. Um, originally when I put these two yarns together they look like shadow and light to me but it didn't really come out that way in the sampler because of the different weights. But each of these is one stitch wide. Each of these is one stitch wide. This is the background color that's between them. You cannot try this technique with one stitch, but this is just like an argyle, this diagonal, the exact same thing. They are so much fun and so easy to do. And you can see what happens when you combine these kinds of stripes with these kinds of stripes. You get window pane. Simple to do. You are going to arbitrarily choose two needles, one about a, oh, a quarter of the way in on this side, a quarter of the way in on that side, and put them in holding position. <clears throat> I also have snipped a couple pieces of yarn. These are about, oh, 18 inches to two feet long, which will be plenty. And this sequence of steps for creating one row of these stripes is about the only thing I ever write down on the blackboard when I'm teaching this class. The sequence is this. Put the needles of contrast color into holding position, knit across with the main color, and three, manually knit the contrast color. Okay, so I've already put my contrast color needles into holding position. Contrast color meaning my stripe needles here. I knit across with the main color, and then I come back and manually knit these two stitches. Notice I'm just leaving my end hang. It does not matter which way you go over. And now I'm going to make, let's see, this one's going to be my diagonal. So I'm going to move my stitch over one. This one's going to be my vertical stripe, so I'll move that one out. Step number one, the stripe needles to holding position. Step number two, knit across with the main color. Step number three, manually knit those stitches. Now, it's important that you try to match the stitch gauge here with the stitches next to it. Sometimes that's a little bit tricky. I mean, that was part of the problem with that sampler. While it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to turn out, just tug on this. One more time, I'm going to go through it. Contrast color needles into holding position. Knit across with main color. Manually knit the contrast color. Okay. <clears throat> now I'd like you to stop the tape. Choose two needles about a quarter of a way in of the way in from either end. Put them into holding position, and on, it doesn't matter which side you do your diagonal or your vertical, but I'd like you to do 10 rows of a diagonal and a vertical stripe. Just keep those three steps for every row in mi mind. One, contrast color needles to holding position. Two, knit across with main color. Three, manually knit contrast color. Rejoin me when you finish that.